Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to write function prototypes in C++. We'll talk about what they're for, we'll talk about some of the terminology, and I'll also show you a couple of um, the common mistakes that I see students making when they're first learning about function prototypes. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? Okay guys, so before we start looking at code, let's talk about you know what, what is a function prototype. Function prototype is a tool that allows you to define your functions or to defer the definitions of your functions until after main. Could be the case that you know with a lot of programmers, they like to have their main function come first, and then they like to have all of the function definitions that main uses uh, come after main. So function prototypes allow you to do that. And so long as the compiler is aware of when you're making your function calls is aware of what the name of the function is, uh, what the return type is, what the parameter list looks like, then the compiler will go ahead and let you compile uh, continuing on. Okay, so we'll use function prototypes to tell the compiler, hey, this is the information that you need, then main will get compiled in the compilation process, and then the compiler will be able to go and look at the function definitions after main and then link everything together. So it, it, it gives you options on how you want to arrange your code. Do you ever have to use function prototypes? No, but it is a tool that you can't have in your toolbox. So let's um, take a look. Let's see what this could look like with some code, okay? So, you know, we're gonna have a function that we will define, uh, let's say a function that will accept two integers as its only argument, um, and that will um, add those together and display them to the user, right? So we might have something that looks like this, int a, int b, and then we could do something like um, c out um, a plus b, okay? So, you know, this is, this is what you would do if you didn't have function prototypes, you could have a call in here, okay? You could do something like um, add eight and three, okay, fine. Okay, but as I was saying before, sometimes programmers will like to have this definition come after main. Okay, now if you try to do that without a function prototype, you're going to have a bad time, right? So if I try to compile, it's going to freak out. Why? We'll take a look at um, our error message here. It says add identifier not found. And that's actually a, a message that's kind of helpful because something is compiler is going down here and it comes upon the add function call, it's like, I don't know what the heck that is because the compiler is compiling top down, right? So it doesn't know what add is. It doesn't know what the primer list is. It doesn't know anything about it. So this is where the prototypes come in. What we do is we essentially take the header of the function and we use that. Okay, so you take that and then you put a semicolon after it and now it will work. So now the compiler knows what to do. So you can see that it actually works at this point. Now, you know, a couple of things about this. One is that um, when you have prototypes, the parameter names are optional and are mostly left out, I think, by most people when they're using function prototypes. Okay, the compiler doesn't need to know in the prototype what the names of your parameters are. So those are optional. You can leave those out. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, and you can do this with as many functions as you want, right? So maybe we'll have another function where we're subtracting, you know, finding the difference between uh, two numbers, two integers. So let's have a, a int a and an int b down here. And we're not going to call it that. We're going to call it sub, right? That's what we're doing. We're creating another function named sub. And so then we'll just see out the difference of those two. Okay, so we'll do something uh, like this. Okay, and we'll put this on its own separate line too. And then now we can call both of them. Okay, so the more functions you have, the more useful I think this becomes in terms of organizing your code and making it a little bit easier to read and figure out what's going on, right? So there you go, you can see that it, that works too. Now, if you take a look at the code now, you've got kind of like a table of contents almost, right? These are our function prototypes. So our function prototypes, 
and it's C++, right? So, I mean, you know that you're going to have a main function. So that's, that's a given, right? But if you have function prototypes like this, this gives you another little kind of uh, benefit in that, you know, your main function definitions here, you can see that you're going to be calling these functions add and sub. You can look at the function prototypes and know at a glance, you know, it's kind of like a menu or a table of contents for your functions. Right? So you know at a glance that all the functions that main's going to use, it's going to use add, it's going to use sub, you know, maybe we'll put another one in here, we'll call it mult, where we're multiplying two integers together, um, and so on. So the more complex the program gets, kind of the easier it is to see exactly what's going on. Okay, and you um, have your main that's right there. Okay, and uh, you can see at a glance the, the main logic, the main line logic here of what your program's doing, you know, at least in simpler programs, you know, that are not too simple. Um, and you can get a feel, see, there it goes, it works. You can get a feel for um, what's actually going on, right? I mean, you can see, oh, what's well, going to add, subtract, multiply. Here's all the function that's main's going to use. Here's where the main line logic is. Um, and so on. And if you need more details, I mean, right here, you look at add and you can look at the parameter list. Oh, well, it's going to add two integers together. You look at sub and you look at the parameter list. Oh, well, that's going to subtract two integers. You look at mult and you look at the parameter list. Oh, that's going to multiply two integers. So you can get a feel for what's happening in the program just kind of like at a glance by looking at the table of contents for your functions. And then as you need more detail, you can go into main, go, oh, okay, then these are going to get called. And then if you need to know how the actual functions or if you want to take a closer look at how the functions are actually implemented, well, then you just scroll down and you look at the actual function definitions. So it's kind of nice in that regard to be able to organize your code. Now that we've said that, <clears throat> you know, these are your function prototypes. This is also known as um, function declarations. Some people refer to them as that function. So we can call them function prototypes or declarations. In my classes, we always refer to them as function prototypes. And um, <clears throat> you've got your little summary here. Now, let me show you a couple of um, common mistakes that I see that students will make, okay? One thing is that they will forget that the function prototypes and the function headers, they have to agree. So what's the function header, right? So this is the function header right here, the function header. That is the top line right here of the function definition, right? So these are our function definitions, our function definitions, definitions. Okay, so this header part has to agree with the prototype. Okay, so headers and prototypes must agree. Well, what do I mean by that? For example, the names must be the same, right? So, I mean, if I made a mistake down here, I made a typo and I typed, um, I typed uh, ADDD. Okay, well, these don't match anymore. So, um, you know, we're trying to call a function and this is referring to a function that doesn't exist. This is trying to call a function that doesn't exist. So, you know, you're going to have a bad time. We're going to see that it doesn't compile. Okay. And you can see there's this really, um, obscure error message here, uh, unresolved external symbol. Okay. Um, that's, that's why this is what's causing it. And it'd be really easy to fix that just by hand tracing through your code or using the commenting out technique. Now, um, another thing that happens, another way that your functions and prototypes must agree, the function header and the prototypes must agree, is in the name of, or the number of parameters. So, for example, if I do this, okay, um, suddenly these don't agree anymore. And um, you've got a function prototype for a function that adds three numbers, but your definition is for two. Those don't agree. Okay, so you're going to have a bad time again. Okay, so... Um, Another thing is, you know, if students will, um, you know, maybe use different, you know, data types, right? And so you can see this is an int, uh, this is a float, and, you know, this is another type of error that's going to cause a build error, right? Because they don't agree. So it's really easy to make that mistake, especially if your main's kind of long and you're, and your prototypes are up here, and then the function definition you're working on is down here. 
you know, what's uh, an easy way of avoiding disagreeing prototypes is to you know, write the prototype first. So you can do something like, um, oh, I don't know, we'll do a modulus one. We'll say void mod and uh, int int, right? So I've got that. Okay, so that's my new prototype from a new function. I got my prototype. I know that that's what I want, right? It's gonna be a function named mod. It's gonna take two integers as its only arguments. It's not returning anything, so it's gonna avoid return type. So I'll just copy my function header and then I'll just scroll down. Okay, and then I will just define my function. So I'll plug in some parameter names here and um, don't forget to get rid of this semicolon. Okay, that's another problem that students often will have. You know, they'll forget to delete that semicolon. And then, you know, we can do our X modulus Y. Okay, and then um, go ahead and compile it. And so, oops, I should probably make my function call, huh? Uh, so we'll mod, mod uh, one, or uh, three, um, two, okay. And so let's go ahead and compile it and run it. Okay, so yeah, three modulus two is one. So, you know, you can do that to avoid having disagreeing function headers, right? But again, don't forget if you're gonna do that, and I think it's a good idea to do that, that, um, you know, you don't put a, you gotta make sure that that semicolon's not there. Don't forget to delete that thing because you can see the little red squiggle that's appearing now. It's gonna have a compile time error, okay? So even says there, um, you know, missing function header. Right, so not good. Okay, so um, another mistake that I'll see students make, um, this is another common one, is you know I'll have an assignment where I'll say, you know, include prototypes with your function definition, and um, well, so what they'll do is they'll define the function the old way, and then they'll still have the prototype up here with the function definition, and it works. The other code compiles and everything runs just great. But this defeats the entire purpose of having prototypes in the first place. Just get rid of, you know, if you're going to do this, why even have a prototype? You know, you don't need it. You know, just leave the prototype out. It's it's pointless um, to define the function before main and then to include a prototype before main. So I'll put in the requirements almost always, you know, to find your prototype before main, to find your functions after main, because that's, that's, that's the purpose of having prototypes. It doesn't make any sense to put them both um, before main. Another thing that I will see, another mistake that I'll see students make, is they'll put their prototypes inside of main, okay? Which is syntactically correct, I mean, it will compile and run, okay? You can't put them there, but typically, typically, and this is what I require with my students because we follow the textbook, is they go before main, right? The, the idea is that you can look at the prototypes and get a feeling for main before you even look at main or what main's gonna use without even having to look at main. Um, and um, so, yeah, I think that's about everything that I have for you in this video. So now you know how to use function prototypes in your C++ programs. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.